Today I'd like to introduce the Snappy RepRap 3D printer. This is my entry for the Gata Grand Personal Manufacturing Prize. This is a low-cost, simple to assemble, open source 3D printer. The goal of this project was to take the original RepRap project's idea as far as I really practically could uh, without using specialty filaments or parts. Basically I achieved this by uh, using a maximally printed design. I took as many of the uh, standard things that you normally see in a lot of these printers like sliders, rails, uh, belts, pulleys, and either eliminated the needed for them or replaced them. Uh, for example, uh, instead of having metal sliders uh, or uh, slider bars that you often see in many of these printers, uh, what I have instead is uh, plastic printed parts that have built-in sliders. For example, I have uh, this V-rail uh, design here that the uh, sliders can slide along there. sounds a little bit rough on this one, but it can be sanded off and made a, lot, a whole lot smoother. Uh, another thing I did was, instead of having uh, belts and pulleys, I uh, replaced that with a rack and pinion design, so that uh, the slider has a uh, rack along the uh, bottom with a herringbone uh, gear design to reduce backlash, and uh, the uh, drive motors for the individual axes has a uh, small pinion gear on it that is also uh, has the matching herringbone design on it. Uh, that makes for a reasonably smooth uh, motion in the X and Y. Uh, I found that uh, did need a little bit of help with the uh, reduction of friction, so that, fortunately enough, uh, can generally be uh, dealt with by either a little bit of uh, fine grain sandpaper uh, sanding in the uh, rails, uh, and more importantly, uh, using a little bit of mineral oil along the uh, sliders and rails uh, helps a lot and makes for a reasonably good motion. Uh, I've also attempted to, as much as possible, make absolutely no need for screws in the entire design. To assemble the entire thing, it all snaps together using special joiners I've uh, designed up. You can see these little joiners in the ends there. They uh, match together and they snap right together and make a nice, solid, fairly tight, close match. I can assemble sleds uh, that are larger than the actual print surface simply by making, taking multiple uh, smaller pieces and being able to snap them together. For example, this is the sled that's designed to actually uh, hold a uh, uh, 200 by 200 millimeter glass build plate that will be able to uh, be your build surface. It extends over the sides just a little bit on each side, and it goes right from end to end there pretty much, uh, as we have the length there uh, set up. That also lets you extend the uh, rack so that the uh, motion can be, uh, it can use the rack for the entire distance of the motion. If uh, you wanted to, you could actually expand the size of each of the axes by putting in another one of these uh, platform pieces and uh, another couple rail pieces on it and it will extend out everything larger. And you could do something like a 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter uh, design if you really wanted to. Pretty much all of the parts that are actually unprinted at this point are relatively dirt common off-the-shelf parts like NEMA motors and uh, one small uh, 686 bearing and uh, a few other parts like that, limit switches. Uh, the few parts, there's like three parts in the entire thing are kind of specialty, uh, of which that would include the J-head hot end and the uh, little extruder uh, drive motor and the ramps electronics itself. All of those are so commonly made for other RepRap designs that it's just ridiculously cheap and easy to get them uh, online at uh, Amazon.com or eBay or wherever. So I don't even consider those to be so much specialty parts anymore since they're so common nowadays.
because the Snappy is a snapped together design, thus its name, uh, it's fairly fast and easy to build, and it's uh, not really that hard to actually build the entire thing from individual parts uh, to actual complete and running in just two hours, really. Uh, the printed parts themselves, they do take about one week to print, uh, continuous time, so give it a week and a half for realistic uh, printing times. Since the Snappy has so very few uh, unprinted parts, it's a fairly cheap printer. Even including the price of the uh, filament to print it, it pretty much comes in for under $300. That was what I found was going and uh, hunting down the parts on Amazon.com and well, McMaster.car for the uh, two lifter rods. I was able to buy everything, with free shipping even, for $292. And honestly, it could probably be done a heck of a lot cheaper if somebody were to actually work at the sourcing of the parts a lot more than I did. The Snappy is fully open source and it's been under development on GitHub uh, since about August 2014. It's written completely in the OpenSCAD parametric uh, modeling language so that you can pretty much take it and change out any particular part size or whatever and be able to regenerate parts and make it fit. If you need a bigger limit switch, take measurements of your limit switch, enter it into the config file, regenerate the files, and well, you have a new printer that uh, uh, will fit for those particular parts that you've chosen. I did some parts counts and calculated out how much of the printer is actually printed. It turns out around 72% of the entire printer, 71-72%, is printed parts if you uh, don't count the uh, little fiddly bits in the cable chains that are printed. If you do count those, it almost goes up to 80% nearly. Uh, this is all by part count. I wouldn't even know how to figure it out by uh, volume at this point without, you know, trying to submerge the thing or something silly. So there you have it, the Snappy 3D printer. Cheap, easy to assemble, very fast to assemble, open source, so if you need to, you can modify it as you need to for whatever changes you need.